like I'm doing right here. A um, few introductions before we get started. To my far right is Dave Conroy. He is the zoning hearing. He is the zoning uh, planning officer. T.J. Walsh is the solicitor for the zoning hearing board. Scott Fisher is a member of the zoning hearing board. Brian Wants is a member of the zoning hearing board. Ron Gresh is a member is the counselor or the solicitor for the township. And Rose Schwamm is our scenario for this evening. My name is Chuck Coxett. I'll be running the proceeding. Thank you all for joining us. A um, little bit of housekeeping here. New Britain Township Zoning Hearing Board is a quasi-judicial body required by statute of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and created by the New Britain Township Board of Supervisors. This board is chartered with a single responsibility to provide due process to the citizens of New Britain Township to appeal zoning and engineering decisions made by the township. The zoning ordinance was created and is maintained by the Board of Supervisors. The zoning hearing board has no jurisdiction over the contents of the zoning ordinance. We ask that any concerns regarding the contents of the zoning ordinance be directed to the Board of Supervisors. Our procedures tonight will be as followed. We shall conduct the hearing in a manner similar to that of a court proceeding, and all testimony shall be given under oath. Only the facts and testimony presented to the board during this hearing will be considered. The board will first hear the applicant's presentation of their case. The board expects the applicant to state the unnecessary hardship, how the proposal will not be detrimental to the public welfare, and any other grounds that the applicant believes support the application. The board will also hear from any other individuals who wish to become parties to the hearing. You'll hear about that in a moment. After the testimony is concluded, the board will also hear from anyone who simply wishes to make a statement or ask a question that is germane to the hearing. Depending on the length of the hearing, the board may or may not make a decision on the application this evening. Just so you know, this, like all township meetings, is on Zoom and being recorded. Our first application for this evening will be for 140 Upper Church Road. Good evening. Good evening. Nate Fox from Obermeyer on behalf of the applicant. Hey, done. Go ahead, have a seat before you get started. We got some housekeeping. Yep. Chuck. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, my bad. I'm sorry. Got distracted by the application of Casadanti Homes Inc. with the property located at 140 and 146 Township, Buckstown, Pennsylvania, identified as tax map parcel 26104. The property is located in the watershed zoning district. The property is improved with a single family detached dwelling, UCD1 and two barn structures. The applicant proposes a minor subdivision of, of the property to create two lots. Each new lot will be improved with a new single family detached dwelling, used to be one. The existing single family detached dwelling will be used as an accessory dwelling, use H14 on model one. The applicant seeks variances from the following section for the township zone ordinance. In section 27-305.H.H14 and section 27501 to permit modified uses and characteristics of the accessory dwelling, and B from section 27-2904.D.5 to permit two driveways to be 68.5 feet apart on lot one, where the required minimum separation distance is 75 feet. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. The board exhibits are as follows. No, no, board exhibits are are as follows. The board exhibits. Exhibit B1 is the zoning hearing board application. Included with that application was an addendum outlining the relief requested. Current D dated September 30th, 2022, and a map and list of surrounding property owners. Exhibit B2 is a subdivision plan consisting of one sheet prepared by Holmes Cunningham Engineering, and it's dated June 16th, 2023. Exhibit B3 is a letter to the intelligencer forwarding public notice for publication of this hearing. Exhibit B4 is the public notice that was just read into the record. Exhibit B5 is proof that that notice was published in the November 2nd and November 9th, 2023 editions of the Intelligencer. Exhibit B6 is a letter of the applicant's attorney providing them notice of this hearing. Exhibit B7 is the township list and map 
of property owners of record that are within 500 feet of the property that is the subject of the application. Exhibit B8 is an affidavit of mailing that, zone, that notice of this hearing was mailed to the property owners listed on Exhibit B7. That notice was mailed on November 9th, 2023 by David Conroy. Exhibit B9 is an affidavit of posting. That notice of this hearing was posted on the property. Excuse me, please. Excuse me, please. If you're going to talk, you have to go outside. Um, the notice was posted on November 9th, 2023 by David Conroy at 12.23 p.m. With that affidavit is also a photo of the notice actually posted on the property. Lastly, Exhibit B10 is the Bucks County Viewer, floodplain viewer, excuse me, aerial and map of the property. You're on a roll. Please explain party status. Is uh, Well, before I do is that, is there anyone here in the room for this particular application, 140 Upper Church Road? There are two matters on the zoning hearing board agenda tonight. One is for 765 North Lime Kiln Pike. 756, thank you. The other is for 140 Upper Church Road. Is there anyone here for Upper Church Road? Okay, thank you. So I will do the speech. All right, there are uh, a few ways that if you are not the applicant that you can participate in this hearing. Um, the applicant and the witnesses are sitting at the table. They will present their case. They will present their witnesses. Um, if you are not the applicant, as I said, the three ways that you can participate in this hearing are as follows. One, you can do nothing. You are not obligated to do anything. You can certainly sit there and listen. The second way is at the end of all of the testimony, when the witnesses are done, when the exhibits have been all presented, the board will typically open up the floor for public comment or questions. At that time, you will be asked to stand, state your name, direct your question at either the board or one of their witnesses. We simply ask that your questions be relevant to the hearing. Uh, and also to the subject matter of the hearing and also relevant to the jurisdiction of this board. This board only has jurisdiction over the zoning ordinance. If it's a question that is better directed to the board of supervisors or some other township commission or board, or maybe a county commission or board, we will kindly let you know that. And maybe you can direct that question there. <clears throat> That's the second one. The third way is you can actually ask to become a party to the application yourself. As the chair said at the outset, this is not a town hall meeting. This is not a board of supervisors meeting. This is a court hearing. It's quasi-judicial because we're not in a courtroom, but it's run like one. So much like you have plaintiff and defendant, you can have zoning applicant and you can have interested parties. A party means you sit in the same level or sit in the same shoes as the applicant. You get to testify yourself under oath. You would be cross-examined under oath. You can put on your own witnesses if you choose. You don't have to call any witnesses if you don't want to. If you don't like the decision of the board, you can appeal it. That's what court, when, you, when I, we also say quasi-judicial, the decision of this board is appealable to the court in Doylestown. The decision of this board, if it's appealed, does not go to the township. It does not go to the township board of supervisors, anybody with the township, it goes to court, okay? How do you get party status? There's two ways. There, I mean, there's two things you need to do. One, you have to ask for it. It's not automatic. And if you also have to be affected by the application, affected means you own or live on property that's within a reasonable distance of the application. If you got a letter or notice in the mail advising you that there's a hearing tonight, you're probably within a reasonable distance. That's a 500 foot distance. If you didn't get a letter, that doesn't mean you're not within a reasonable distance. You just have to articulate why you are affected. And the board will then make a determination on whether you're affected by the application. If you're from Quakertown and you're visiting, you're not affected. Okay, thank you for coming, but you're not getting party status, okay? Having said all that and hopefully not confusing anybody is there anybody interested in party status for the Casadani homes 140 upper church road application okay hearing none thank you very much for putting up with me mr chairman yep and the same we won't we won't go through that again that will apply to our second uh appeal on the agenda for this oh, evening yes thank you and also just to repeat, that does not mean that people won't be given a chance to have a make a comment or ask a question. We'll also you know, make sure we make time for that. Okay. 
with all that said, <clears throat> floor is yours. Evening. Thank you very much. Uh, again, Nate Fox from Obermeyer on behalf of the Cassidani Homes, Inc. To my left is Joseph Cassidani, principal and owner of Cassidani Homes, Inc. And our professional engineer, Rob Cunningham, licensed professional engineer in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, who has prepared the plans uh, for the board this evening that are the subject of zoning airport application. I have a set of exhibit packages, um, most of which was covered in the, in the uh, board exhibits. However, just for order of presentation, we've assembled these, uh, and there are a couple new plans, if I may present these. I appreciate it. So, and who will be testifying this evening? Uh, both gentlemen? You know, both, both gentlemen. Okay. You'll have, you have them sworn in right and, after uh, this. So, so we'll wait. So you're done, and we'll get that done. Sure. So we collectively call this uh, Exhibit A1. Um, this is a five tab exhibit package, which includes a tab one, the zoning hearing board Thank application, you. tab two, an aerial rendering. So, yeah. Would you mind, Nate, just if I called it A1 through A5? A, just, that's fine. Okay. So A1 will be the zoning hearing board application. A2, the aerial rendering, uh, which superimposes uh, the proposed uh, homes and what we're talking about this evening. A3, existing conditions and site analysis plan. Uh, A4 is a subdivision plan. Uh, and A5 is a collection of pictures of the existing structures that we'll talk about. Let's see. Thank you. It'll be easier when we refer to it on the record to go A1, A2 versus tab one of A1, tab two. Even better. Thank you. And Rose, it'll be easy for her to get mad at me. Gentlemen, will you be sworn? You swear testimony about the deal will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guys. Please state your names and spell bold. J O E C A S A D O N T I. Robert Cunningham, C U N N I N G. Uh, if, Thank you. If it pleases the board, I know you have another application this evening. It looks like there's folks that are interested in that application. That's some no objectors. I can do a, an offer called modified offer. I'll give a full summary of the application, give you a summary of the testimony that both the gentlemen uh, would give, and offer them, confirm everything I've said is true and correct, and offer them for questions. And of course, if there are members of the public want to say something, or we have to address something a little bit. I can do so. Is that acceptable? Yes. Thank and you. So, sure. Our, sure thing. Our application this evening, 140 Upper Church Road, it's in the what, zoning watershed, watershed zoning district. It's a 13.349 acre property. There is an existing home. Uh, if I could direct you to tab two, which is exhibit A2. This is the overall property, a yellow line. It shows the outline of the property. There are two homes uh, would be proposed if the subdivision uh, were to be approved. Can I just do you have one extra of those copies that maybe some of the residents Absolutely. could make available if they wanted to follow along this route? Would that help? Do you need that one? This one. Oh, John, you don't here's a, here's there, need a copy. Here's the question. not here for your application. I, I appreciate that, but it, it, as a courtesy back, if you want to share this with anybody else, courtesy feel free has. to. I would be happy. It's very courtesy, though. You're also courteous. I love it. We don't tolerate discourteousness. <laughs> okay. So, sure. Thanks. So, so just to give you to give you an idea of the property, uh, this is a 13-acre and change property proposed to be subdivided into two lots. Lot number one on the right at 5.46 acres, lot number two on the left at 7.889 acres. The two variances requested are solely related to lot number one on the right-hand side. We're asking for a variance to preserve some of the existing structures uh, to be maintained, not as a separate dwelling unit. We would ask that the board impose a condition on any approval that the, the existing structures may be considered part of the same dwelling, uh, accessory structures, uh, no full, no separate uh, rental unit, no in-law suite, and would be used in a manner that is consistent with and part of the single family home to be built. Uh, that's intended to be family fun center, maybe a home office, maybe the children of the family have an interest in art and can be a separate art studio, 
something that allows a creative repurposing of structures which have value and are consistent with Mr. Casadani's development of business practices. If you're familiar with his homes, often an element of Casadani homes is taking an existing barn or an existing feature on a property and instead of scraping it and building a new home, incorporating that within the redevelopment of the property. And this is a unique opportunity in which to do so. And I'll, I'll summarize that as well. But in order to do that, we do need variance relief from uh, section 501A to permit protection of the existing residential property. Uh, and that may be converted from their principal structure today to part and parcel of the home on the property. As these homes are not yet in for permitting, that will be determined as to how that will occur, but that will all be part of the building permit process that Mr. Cassadani will have to go through with this township, as well as these being served by well and septic. Bucks County Health Department will have to be involved or that the septic system as designed is not being overtaxed or underdesigned for those uses. But again, it's an accessory structure not to be a separate long unit, rental unit, or used in any manner uh, thereof. The other variance that's at issue with relative to this property as related to a driveway. Uh, minimum separation between driveways uh, is required to be 75 feet. Um, the reason that this can only be 68 uh, and a half feet away is along, again, at, at uh, exhibit A2. See the property boundary to the right? And so it's called a, a jagged with a jagged and then a radius line. Um, there is a, a shared driveway um, on this property, right on that property line that has two legs. Might be a little difficult to see. One of the legs comes onto the property lot one. So about as far away as we can slide a new driveway, it only gives us 68 and a half feet. So that condition is existing. That's a right that the adjacent property owner has. And haven't asked for an agreement to extinguish that, but a seven and a half foot difference between 68 and a half feet and 75 feet for a, a shared driveway with a property of this size and the little amount of traffic that's on this road. If the property was shaped differently, if it was a square lot, wasn't uh, irregularly shaped, uh, that would not be an issue, but we're up against uh, two things that have existed prior to uh, um, prior to the, the subdivision of this property. So as to um, the property, so you, so you can uh, get a full picture of Asking for if we look at exhibit A3 um, and compare that to exhibit A2, which shows me the extent natural features and system conditions which exist in the property. And even at uh, five and seven acre lots, there are some, some constraints which we are uh, limited to disturbing. If you look at exhibit A4, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the subdivision plan. Uh, again, shows you that if you compare that to exhibit A3, you why these homes have to be pushed closer to the third to stay out of the existing natural features. Mm -hmm. um, and then at exhibit A5, these are the pictures of the existing structures and system, which uh, what Mr. Spadani would tell you. Uh, these structures are they're not delineated as historic or on register, but they're historic uh, in appearance. Uh, there just are not all that many of the Bucks County farmhouses in the middle anymore. So first picture at uh, Exhibit A5, a white-sided, uh, wood-sided farmhouse. Uh, the second page is a picture of the interior. You see uh, existing wide plank uh, hardwood floors, very deep window wells, transom windows, the doors, all unique architectural features that Mr. Castanati would hate to uh, scrape and hopes to repurpose into uh, whatever the new homeowner desires there. Uh, tab three or page three of exhibit A5 shows a uh, drone shot of the existing barn. Um, and some of the some of the uh, wings or pieces of the barn will be taken down and that will be consolidated a little bit, but that will also help reduce the amount of impervious coverage. Uh, the fourth page at uh, tab A5 is the interior view from above. The inside corner of the barn, as 
through the building permit process that we determine what elements are to be preserved and extended. Last page goes to an interior the post and being framed uh, barn that Mr. Peck and I will be uh, preserving and incorporating into, uh, into the overall development of this uh, property. That last photo is a picture of the bigger barn or the smaller barn? Mm -hmm. It's sir, the larger barn. The larger barn. Thank you. It's, going to, it's the top floor of the larger barn. So, and, and thank you, you know, and so Mr. Castadani, if he was called to testify, would tell you that the reasons that I've stated are the reasons he's hoping to preserve these structures. Zoning ordinance has a requirement that requires us to um, obtain relief. Hopefully you're familiar with his work in New Britain Township and also the surrounding township, Stilltown Township, and also in East Rock Hill Township to the north, uh, that these will all be consistent with the character and quality of the homes he's known to build. Um, and would accept a condition that accessory structures would not be used to separate dwelling bit in law suite or carried in a manner that separate apart from the primary structure. Um, so we also tell you that the existence of the common driveway and its two lines uh, of the driveway are in part because the neighbors uh, had a large RV and having two legs there, it's not really possible or desirable for them to extinguish light on all property because that allows a wider vehicle to obtain access through the common driveway or shared driveway. And that is important to that homeowner. And it just puts us in a spot we have to get relief from 75 feet to 68 and a half feet. Mr. Cunningham called to testify to tell you that he's a professional engineer in the Capital of Pennsylvania, licensed with such, has testified before this board and many others as an expert in the field of civil engineering. He's prepared the plans before you this evening. He would tell you that the variances at issue are related to the existing conditions of the property, not a general uh, application of zoning ordinance. These are not things that are self-created. They are part and parcel to the character and nature of uh, this uh, area and would not be detrimental or harmful to the surrounding community if uh, granted. If granted, the variances would be uh, in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the zoning ordinance and not injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. And also the granting of the variance is necessary for the reasonable use of the land to the variances granted by the zoning hearing board would both be the minimum variances that accomplish this purpose. All of that relates in part to the uh, irregular nature of the property size and shape as a specified to which really strains where we can do these things and preserving those all for accessory structures for the, for the use as described by Mr. Castanon. Gentlemen, is everything I've said true and correct to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Yes. Particularly, Joe, the condition, if the board were inclined to approve this, it would be acceptable for the accessory structures to be prohibited from use as a rental dwelling unit, an in-law suite, or in any manner that a separate dwelling unit from the primary home to be built on the property. Is that acceptable condition? Yes, absolutely. It's no way in it's the intention at all. With that, we'd ask for the uh, admission of our exhibit package. Uh, so it's uh, A1 through A5 in respect to the request, the uh, granting of the variances. Um, if there's any questions, we're happy to answer them. Or if any members of the public have the same, we're happy to do so as well. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. A couple. Um, that's where I'm going. Oh, well, thank right you, uh, Mr. Catani. The Board of Assessment pegs the year of build for the house at 1850 and barns for around 1900. Does that sound correct to you? It sounds correct, and it was, I believe, one of the farmhouse. There was an addition in the 1940s. The architect yeah. of the house and did some things lower level of the house, like the family. Beautiful, beautiful Miller um, did a beautiful job. So, with the conversion to a non dwelling but living space structure, it's it, will it have any bathrooms? Will it have any bedrooms? It will not have any bedrooms, it will not have a kitchen, and it will have the bathroom. So, if they're over there hanging out, they can go to the bathroom there. All right. So from a septic perspective, then it'll need some kind of system, but it may not be. Yeah, it's it's an auxiliary building uh, bathroom for the house. So 
uh, permitting, you know, with the Board of Health will be clear. And, and I, I actually have on Ridge Road, I also have a very <laughs> similar scenario where barn is an auxiliary finished barn with a bathroom. But in that case, like with the Board of Health, I have a four bedroom house with a septic for four bedrooms and they allow one auxiliary building if the building is existing. In this case, it would be very similar. Um, I mean, that's right. Going, Typically, the, the the number of bedrooms drives the septic system. So if you know, yes, it's yeah. To my so, understanding, yeah. that's the so so with this auxiliary, you would be no better. Okay, but you would be willing to also to incorporate into this condition that the any septic system that would be tied to it would be auxiliary only, not not sponsored by bedrooms. Correct. Okay. That's all I have for. That solves my question. So, okay. Scott, <laughs> Mr. Fisher? Yeah. None at this time, no. I do have one for Mr. Cunningham. But... Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So, Mr. Cunningham, then, could you just, I think I know what it is, but could you elaborate a little more on what those natural features are that really appears to reduce the building envelope size? Sure. Um, uh, there's a tributary which bisects the site. Um, if you're looking at uh, A3, um, there is a large hatched area um, in the, the blue outline, the blue hatch. Um, those dashed lines are the riparian buffers that are associated with the, the tributary which bisects the site. Is, um, it, is it an unnamed? Is it? Yeah, it's an unnamed tributary. Uh, it goes in the Chamonix. Um, is, it, is it wet all the time? Or? There, there are wetlands associated with it. So it, it, and there's a pond. There's a lot of other features. So it's not, it's not anything major, but it is regulated by the zoning ordinance. I'm just wondering, uh, for the record, I just wanted a description of the. It, it, I mean, is it the West Branch of the Chamonix Creek, or is it a dry ditch that is still qualifies as for riparian corridor protection? It, it's, it's a, it's a regulated, it's a regulated. Ditch. It ha will have water in it more time than not. Okay, but, yeah. thank you. Um, and like I said, there's, there's wetlands associated with, with the stream and there's a pond. So once you apply those, we also have, uh, woodlands on site, but mainly in the riparian corridor. Um, there's some steep slopes. So, uh, it's pretty impactful to the, um, building envelopes. And then obviously all the calculations that go along with the subdivision. So, um, all of, there's a, Ratio base that area, which comes out. So, um, though they're very large blocks, the the remainder is not as, I guess, robust as as a normal seven and five acre lot. A lot too. You, you couldn't. You'd have to cross that right that tributary if you wanted to reach the larger, at least non. Correct, and we, based on the the way the ordinance is written, we are going to have to put most of that in a conservation easement anyway. So, realistically, like you'd be able to build in that front portion. Primarily, that's that's really all you'd be able to do. Okay. That's all I have for Mr. Cunningham. Okay. In looking at the plans, is it possible for you to reconfigure the driveways that you could get to comply with the ordinance as it is? So, um, not really. Um, and the reason I say that is Upper Church Road has a pretty good slope to it. So, um, with the existing driveway, um, which is the split driveway part of the shared access, um, and the, the lot width that we have for lot one, um, to, to shift that driveway down would subsequently shift the driveway for lot two down to comply with the 75 feet. Mm -hmm. And if you shift that another, you know, eight feet, then you're in, you're kind of like fighting the grade. So the, the because of the slope of the road. Shifting it for strict performance is, you know, not really practical. The, the easier alternative would be to remove or modify the split in the shared um, section because that's the that's the piece, piece that's um, uh, in violation. So that would be the easier way. But obviously, based on discussions when we're in front of the planning commission, the neighbor had come up and expressed their concern. Um, we talked about it internally and we figured um, we would leave that condition because it has been there for hundred, maybe a hundred years, whatever it may be. Um, and again, based on the slope of the road 
there's no real way to remove that other angle because that driveway as it splits comes at two acute angles. So if you want to head uh, down the hill to the south, you would come out the right and to go north, you would go out the left. So it's kind of, if it came out 90 degrees, it'd be a different story, but it's not. There are two acute angle seats. It'd be difficult to turn the opposite direction. Yeah. So on exhibit A3, uh, so there is a, a barn that's to be removed, mm -hmm. correct? So um, I'm trying to visualize. So that's not one of the barns. Can you walk me through which barn or what barns are mm -hmm. remaining yeah. and which barns are? I'm just trying to understand that. Yeah, it's, it might be easier to see under it too, yeah. um, with the aerial. It's, um, awesome. So the, the farmhouse is the first dwelling up on the left when you come up the yellow line with the long shared driveway. And that, that's obviously uh, the first portion of reliefs. And then in the rear, um, there are two barns basically perpendicular to each other. Mm -hmm. So you have the farmhouse. You've got like a barn that's like a shed, and then you have the big barn that's like a T. Yeah, so right. well, they're not so the, the barn in the middle is not connected to the farmhouse or the big barn. So we plan on removing the entire big or the, or the smaller barn that's like a shed, like, like a um, shop, kind of workshop kind of barn, completely remove that. And then on the big barn, you'll see there's a main box, and then there's like some shed roof lower sections. The lower section. We removed because the main lot is really in great shape with you know this the horse stall and you know the cow folk it's just a beautiful craftsmanship in there. But the added on shed roofs that they must have done when that was a horse farm and they made like an office kind of thing, it's it's kind of it's pretty junky. Um so by removing the the one that was probably that that workshop type building, which is between the farmhouse, that right, that building there will be gone. Which yeah. is on page four, the lower right yeah. hand corner of the section. Right. Oh. And then part of you know the shed was on or the main barn coming off, it really helps with improvements as well. And it just makes the yard a lot nicer for the new owner. No. You have no with that said this is the time when we'll uh, open the floor up to those who are in attendance this evening to ask a question or make a comment i ask that if you wish to just stand state your name and your address for the record and speak clearly so that we can get it on the record so does anybody wish to make a comment ask a question or clarification please And, yeah. Okay. Did, did, yeah. I did. Um, I've been in those structures, and that large barn has some significant structural issues. Um, and it had a new joining property. I just had some concerns about that. I just was wondering if Mr. Cosmo can adjust whether they will be addressed because there's large holes in floors, there's big beams falling down. So I just was curious if we could address that. Just being that close, there are risks that that could fall and having a trading property discussed. So when we're in the process of you know building this new home and this new owner has you know the farmhouse and this barn at that point maybe even prior to that point while we're you know once we have our approval for our lots we're going to do all the demo so we're going to demo the one building that's gone we're going to demo the shed areas off we're going to at that point make sure the structure is safe if it's not safe I would take it down, take that lumber and those beams and use it as I have in the past. I, I did a house on Upper Stump Road there in Hilltown with the silo and the barn did the same thing, took it down and used the parts because that was not sound at all. 
This one seems pretty sound to mm -hmm. me. I haven't had an engineer certify that or look into it. But when I do the demolition and I do the removal of, especially when I do the removal of the shed roof areas, I'm definitely going to have an engineer in there to say, this is what you can do. This is what you can't do. Or this is no good. I will put on record that if he says this is unsound, it will come down. Um, there's no way I want to have that there if it's unsound. Um, so well, that I'm willing to. Well, I think Ms. Thomas's question is, is, a, is more of a, it's not a zoning issue, but we're here. But if it's, we don't know what the timing of it is going to take between that. So I think her question was more like, if this is in danger of falling down tomorrow, yeah. what happens? It's not in danger of falling down tomorrow. I've been in the building myself too. I've been building for 44 years. It's not in danger of falling down. All right. I've been but... falling down the last 200 some years. It's not going to fall down yeah. tomorrow. Um, okay. And then my other question was the telephone pole that is on my property has the power lines, which split. The, the power comes in from the street to the telephone pole and then split to my property and to the farmhouse. Will that be removed? That, or will you can like will there be a new pole put up for the new property or will that continue to stay there? Again, that's that's not a zoning matter. Um it most, just it feed that power to that building. I understand most subdivision and Mr. Cunningham might be able to clarify this for me, but most new subdivisions are required to have underground utilities. I don't know if there are exemptions or carve outs for properties that are already served with aerial. Um, so I, that is not a question this board can help, help can answer. But, um, so, but thank you, Ms. Thomas. What else? Yes, sir. My name is Nelson Watt and I live at 108 Upper Church Road. Sir, can you spell your last name, sir? W-H-E-T-O-N. The question I have deals with their backed up septic system, which where they're going to have to run a line of pipe five, six hundred feet to a backup system. If you look at what they have there, you've got that main big house. Right below it is a spring house. If you draw a straight line from the spring house, which is in line with the main house, down to the creek or watershed, years ago there was a series of springs along that line that fed into the creek. Now, I probably know more about 140 and <clears throat> 146 than anybody sitting in this room, because I lived there for over 70 years. And I'm saying, if there are springs there, are you going to be allowed to run a pipe for a backup system through where they are up to the backup system? Doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, so that's going to have to be looked at. If the springs have dried up, fine. My other point is where they want that backup system I think this gentleman in the first hearing that we had said, well, it's 100 feet away from your well. That's all well and good. But my well is here, and their backup systems are on a higher elevation than my well. And I've got to be concerned about that. Because if there's a problem with that backup system, there's going to be a problem for me. I will guarantee you of that. The, as was testified, that you're they're going to have to get involved with permitting process, which will include water, environmental, and frankly, the details of that. Okay. As much as I would love wow. to pretend like I know, yeah, I, I just it's above our pay grade. But I'm happy for you to make the comment and ask the question. This is your yeah. time. Maybe they dried up, but since it's not my lane, I'm not going to go over and check and see if they're there. That's this gentleman's lane. Mm -hmm. At one time, it was our land, but it's his. I'm not going to check that out, but that needs to be checked. From the big house to the spring house, and you, you've got literally a corridor of five or six springs. But this is back in the 1950s and the 1960s. Maybe they've dried up now. Okay. But if they haven't, that needs to be checked. And also, my second point, that backup system... 
I don't care if it's a thousand feet from my well. It's on a higher elevation. I have to be concerned with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do we have anyone else? Okay. Hearing none. Do you have any closing statements? I think we'll be able to address all the uh, residents' concerns satisfactorily. And I think uh, Mr. Castellani, a track record of building in the township, it's not going anywhere. So if there's a problem, he's, he's here to address it. So we'd uh, kindly ask for your approval this evening and thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, we'll go off the record.
record folks the board has completed their deliberations and mr walsh will you assist us in framing the motion please the recommended motion would be to grant the relief as requested subject to the condition uh, as outlined by the applicant in his testimony clarified that the septic system would be an auxiliary system or ancillary whatever it's referred to but it wouldn't be a bedroom based system uh, and there would be no bedrooms in any of the structures Is that agreeable yes do i have a motion to i make that motion based upon those parameters do i have a second and i'll second that okay. all those in favor aye aye thank okay you very, thank you very much thank, thank you thank you for your time good luck Christine, who made the motion? Sorry, uh, Scott made God. the motion. Sorry, I, yeah. pulled, the, I pulled the court out. Yeah. No, Ryan. Ryan. I only seconded by half. Give us a few minutes to set up. Next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can dance around.
Okay. We're on the record. Ladies and gentlemen, the next item on our agenda this evening is for the property at 765 North Lime Kiln Pike. Mr. Conroy, will you please read the public notice and place the application on record? Sure. The application of Heather to Sandra for the property located at 756 North Lime Kiln Pike, New Britain Township, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, identified as tax map parcel number 26 dash three dash 31 dash two property is located in the watershed zoning district the property is approved of a single family detached dwelling to speed one an accessory shed structure in ground pool and dogging the applicant proposes to conduct a pet resort use use a 13 or alternatively a commercial kennel use use a9 at the property the applicant seeks variances from the following sections of the new britain township zoning ordinance from section 27-300.C to permit more than one principal use on the property, from section 27-501 to allow the pet resort use, use A13 or commercial kennel use, use A9 at the property where such uses are not permitted in the watershed zone district. <laughs> from section 27-305.A, point A13, from section 27-305.A, point A9, and section 27-502 is related to required minimum lot area, required minimum lot width, maximum permitted impervious surface ratio, and required minimum front side and rear yard setbacks for the proposed uses. And from section 27-2608 in connection with the proposed polls. Thank you, sir. Mr. Walsh, will you please read the board exhibits? They are as follows. Exhibit B1 is the zone hearing board application dated August 1st. With that application was uh, the current deed and a map and list of surrounding property owners. Exhibit B2 was a letter for, uh, dated August 21st from William Dudek requesting a delay uh, in the board's scheduling the hearing and granting a waiver of the scheduled required time period for the board to schedule the hearing. Exhibit B3 is a letter dated October 6th, also from William Dudek, counsel uh, for the applicants, amending the zoning hearing board application to include certain, di certain dimensional variance requests. Exhibit B4 is an existing features plan, consists of one sheet prepared by American Land Boundary Services. It is dated August 30th and last revised October 9th of this year. Exhibit B5 is a letter of the intelligencer forwarding public notice for advertising. Exhibit B6 is the public notice that was just read into the record. Exhibit B7 is proof that that notice was published in the November 2nd and November 9th, 2023 editions of the intelligencer. Exhibit B8 is a letter of the applicant's attorney dated October 30th, providing the applicant's notice of this hearing. Exhibit B9 is the township list and map of property owners of record that are within 500 feet of the property that is the subject of the application. Exhibit B10 is an affidavit of mailing. That notice of this hearing was mailed to the property owners listed on Exhibit B9 by David Conroy, Township Director of Planning and Zoning, and that notice was mailed on November 9th. Exhibit B11, is an affidavit of posting that notice of this hearing was posted on the property by David Conroy, November 9th, 2023 at 12, 16 p.m. And with that affidavit is a photograph of the notice posted on a stake on the property. Exhibit B12 is the Bucks County floodplain viewer aerial and map of the property. And lastly, exhibit B13 is the original plan of subdivision for Brian Benford. Uh, it was recorded in July, on July 22nd, 1968, creating the property that's the subject of this application. It's uh, recorded in Plan Book 56 at page 31. Um, Thank you, sir. Sure. Will you assist us with the analysis? Yes. Before we opened the hearing, uh, the, uh, myself uh, the, uh, and counsel for the applicant in the township, Mr. Sean Gresh, who is here, we had a colloquy with the applicant with an understanding that there are certain aspects of the application that, uh, although we do have them advertised, there are other parts of it that we, we kind of need to pick up and clean up. Um, so, Mr. Dudek, if you'd like to recite the amendment to the application you're seeking tonight, um, I can then take it from there. Thank you very much, Mr. Walsh. Uh, Mr. Dudek, on behalf of the applicants, what we're seeking to amend in terms of the application is to uh, include an appeal from the enforcement notice with respect to the use. This was a, a violation, an alleged violation of Section 27-501 of the zoning code uh, where um, it was stated by the township that the applicants were conducting 
a dog boarding business upon the property and that a pet resort or an A9 kennels is not permitted in the water shed zoning district. And we just seek to amend the application to uh, include an appeal of the determination that there is a business being operated there in violation of, I guess it'd be either one of those two. A9 is the kennel and A13, I believe, is the pet resort. The, the enforcement notice, Mr. Dudek, you're referring to, I do have a copy of it here. It's July, dated July 7, 2023. Yes. Um, it is limited to the use. It only mentions the A9 pet resort, but okay. to the extent, I guess you're saying it, it, it would, would have included also at the other dogs type use, you would like that included by implication. Well, right, because pet resort is actually A13, where A9 is kennel. Yeah, it says A9 pet resort, so it mixes the two of them. Yeah, so I don't know which would what it's being called. Understood. Pet resort, okay. Dog kennel. So we just believe that the activities don't arise to either one. So we're appealing that determination. Okay. So the amendment then does does that also your request to amend the application. Uh, to include an appeal from these enforcement does the enforcement notice does it also include an appeal of the other july 7th 2023 enforcement notice uh, which was directed purely at the dimensional aspects yes we'll just cover that as well okay so orally we will allow those amendments because we believe the application by requesting relief from them essentially by implication and extension does include that but that changes the prospect of how we then have to proceed because when there's an enforcement notice which is then coupled with a variance the enforcement notice comes first because that's what prompts all the activity when you have an enforcement notice the township gets to go first and my understanding mr gresh is you know now that this has been amended preparing to go tonight is more suited to go next month because we didn't have it framed as such tonight mr walsh if i may just to make a record of it that's correct uh, after the Township authorized me to enter the case in opposition to the application as originally filed. Uh, I contacted Mr. Walsh and, and Mr. Dudek to confirm whether or not appeals were pending. Uh, <clears throat> upon the belief that appeals were not pending, um, at least until earlier today, I was of the belief that appeals were not pending. Therefore, the township is not currently prepared to go forward in defense of and, and to bear the burden of proof in furtherance of the uh, notices of violation that were issued by the township that Mr. Dudek was just referencing. Therefore, it would be a request to continue this matter to a later date so we can be prepared for that and present that evidence. Okay. I think in fairness, we'll we'll grant that <laughs> continuance. Uh, we granted your amendment to the application. That's the necessary corollary. So to expand the board exhibits, what was the last one I got? The last one was B13, sir. Thank you. So we will make Exhibit B14, the first enforcement notice referenced by Mr. Dudek, which is dated July 7th. It's a letter signed by David Conroy. It is effectively an enforcement notice under the zoning ordinance and the municipality's planning code. It is the one that is specific to the use, commercial activity. The second one will be B15, and that is also a letter of July, dated July 7th. That relate to the dimensional aspects of the what it's referred to as the non-permitted improvements. Okay, so now we have a more updated record. The board uh, as has granted, I mean, through me, the amendment orally to your application. We're also granting the continuance on the record for Mr. Gresh's statement and position. When we return, the next meeting is- December 21st. Thank you. December 21st at 7 p.m. in this room. Um, when we resume, we will be working off the assumption that now we will follow the procedure that we've outlined tonight. The township will go first, the township will present its case, uh, and then you will still reserve the right or you still will have the ability to present a case for hardship as it relates to the variances that are pending that was originally filed. Understood. Okay? Yes. And if anything transpires or changes in between today and December 21st, preferably before December 21st, right. let me know. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Although I know you can't make that promise because <laughs> stuff, stuff changes at the last minute, I get it. So I hope we weren't gonna be ruining um, everybody's December 21st, but this matter will be continued to that date 
at this time, 7 p.m. There will be no further notices given. There will be no further mailings, no postings. Um, it will be put on the township website, but the normal public notice that the board is obligated to give, notice in a paper, mailing, sticking at a stake on the property and posting it, that will not be done. That's already been done. Okay? Yes, Thank you all for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're adjourned. Thank you, Sean.